you might not have thought you'd see one of these on this bench quite so soon and quite frankly neither did I but I did get a chance to obtain it and so I did I try not to be a grudge holder so here it is the Glock 40 generation 4 it's the only generation it comes in MOS which stands for modular optics system we'll talk about that in a minute and there it is and it pretty much fills this box about as much as a Glock can fill this box. Matter of fact, if they ever make a Glock that is any bigger than the 40, they're going to have to make special boxes because this is this box is maxed out. So let's take a quick look at the pistol here in the box, talk about how it comes and some of the specs. And then I'll get this thing out of the range and I will do a first hundred and um, see what all the fuss is about. All right, so first of all, this copy of the Glock 40 comes with three magazines. There's one in the pistol, there's two more here. Comes with the little Glock magazine loader, which is not all that terribly useful. Um, so, comes with generation four assorted backstrap options like all Gen 4s. I typically just leave the regular one on it. In fact, I typically put a talon grip on it. I already have a talon grip for this gun and I'm probably gonna put the talon on it before I even take it out and shoot it. Cause I know for a fact that's gonna be an improvement. So if you wanted to, you could put on some of these additional back straps. You've got a couple here with a nice beaver tail and a couple without, but any of these are going to make the grip larger. And the last thing I need with these dainty little hands is a larger grip on this giant frame because this is a big, big pistol. All right, so you get those. You get the magazines, you get the gun. You also get this. This is a set of um, plates for the optic system. And it comes with a little bit of hardware. You can see there a little hex head screw. Actually, it's not. It's a star screw. Um, and those plates, let me show you one up close, look like this. And they go in place of this removable top of the slide. Right? And they've pushed the sight back. This has the standard underdog sight. There is an adjustable sight available for this pistol as well, but this one has just the standard. They've pushed that sight back a little bit to ride right at the very rear edge of the slide and then we have this cutout and this cutout is to accept this plate and then in turn an optic so a red dot basically sight I do have one uh, that I'm going to put on here I'm probably going to put it on right away before I even take it out and shoot it um, I will probably take it off at some point in the future just to see how it uh, does with the standard sights, but nothing special there or different. Um, gets the normal stuff in the box. You get a cleaning brush and a little rod. You get your first shell casing um, and you get your owner's manual and that's about it. You know, the clock basics. So let me take this thing out of the box, get the box out of the way and then just talk about the gun for a minute. Okay, so some of the basic specifications of this gun are <laughs> fairly impressive because again this gun is completely different animal than what you might be used the to. The length of this gun, overall length of this gun is 9.49 inches, nine and a half inches long. It is a behemoth. The height 5.47, well that's not too much different, right, than a 20 or 21, probably even the 41. The width is 1.28. Again, it's a full-size Glock, but it's also a much wider slide. This is a very thick slide. The barrel length is 6.02. For, uh, for our human purposes, we'll just call that six inches. Six inch barrel. Sight radius, 8.19 inches published sight radius almost eight and a quarter inches 
of sight radius. That is incredible. So at some point I will, I will just shoot it with open sights just to see. I mean, you know, that, that in itself is going to provide a decent amount of accuracy, plus the inherent accuracy of the 10 millimeter round. And oh, did I mention it is a 10 millimeter handgun. The weight of this thing, are you ready? 28.15 ounces. That's unloaded, empty magazine. 28.15 ounces. This thing is a, this is a heavy gun. It's definitely a heavy gun. It's fairly well balanced feeling. It's a little top heavy. Um, and we've got a lot of steel hanging out front here, but once we get a magazine full of 10 millimeter rounds in here, of which it will hold 15, that's gonna balance things out quite a bit. It's gonna put a lot of the weight right in your hand. And at that point, it takes this thing up, up at or over 40 ounces when it's loaded. Okay, so you may know the story. You may have seen my other video where I was doing a little bit of a complaint. Um, so it took me a while to get a hold of this. And even now that I have it, I don't feel any sense of urgency to get it out and do anything with it. But I will anyhow uh, before too long. I will get this thing out to the range. That'll be part of this video. So it'll seem instantaneous to you, even though weeks may have actually passed. So before I do shoot it, I'm gonna do a couple things. I'm gonna put an optic on here and I'm gonna put a talon grip on it. Like I said, I've already got the talon grip. Just for a quick comparison, here's a Glock 20. This is actually a Gen 3. Glock 20, but this was previously the mightiest Glock, 10 millimeter, standard full-size capacity, and it's a behemoth too. It's a big boy, but next to the, the new 40, it doesn't look so big anymore, does it? Not so big anymore, are you? So there gives you a little bit of an idea just how big this 40 is. Uh, magazines are interchangeable between the 20 and the 40, which is pretty typical for Glocks within a caliber. Uh, magazines are almost always interchangeable. One of the really good points of a Glock. Okay, another comparison that I just have to do <laughs> Is, this is certainly now officially <laughs> the biggest Glock made. And here is the littlest Glock made, the Glock 42. You could, if somebody could make a mount for me, I'd appreciate it. <laughs> I need Picatinny mount to go on this rail with like maybe just a clamp that I could clamp to the top of this slide. And if I could do that, I could actually mount the Glock 42 on the front of the Glock 40. Say, so, hey, where do you carry your backup? Right here. <laughs> okay, as promised, out at the range with the Glock 40, Gen 4, the only kind of gen there is for a Glock 40. I've got my Burris uh, Surefire 3 optic installed on it. I've got a little the protective hood that comes with it on there right now. I'll take that off. I'm going to do things a little bit unorthodox for my first 100. I'm actually going to try and do some, some sight in and get this thing on target pretty well zeroed in with this optic. It should be close. I've been running it on an M&P uh, Pro Series. and uh, Well, that was rude. And um, So it should be close, but let's see if I can get this maybe tweaked in a little bit, enough to know that I'm going to be making some decent hits. And then we'll play around with some accuracy tests. I'll do some... Uh, Probably going to do some chrono tests, compare it to the Glock 20, just to see if this air extra length in the barrel really gives us a lot of extra velocity or, you know, better accuracy. So the Glock 40 is pretty much designed for hunting, sportsmen, maybe some target shooting, but let's be honest, there aren't a whole lot of people that take a 10 millimeter out to do target shooting. So, you know, really hunting, I think, is, is kind of the design goal for this thing. Um, you know, being able to, uh, with the MOS system, being able to put the optic on it is nice. Um, the six inch barrel should make a difference in terms of, you know, ballistics. So I'm going to do a little bit of chronography testing between a Glock 20 and the Glock 40. So 
So I want you to load up a couple magazines, do some test shots, break this thing in a little bit, and then I'll do some accuracy tests sight in this sight. Okay, I'm just going to shoot a magazine of 15 rounds through the Glock 40, which by the way will fit in a Glock 20 slash Glock 21 holster, but <laughs> just barely. The entire trigger guard isn't, uh, if, if you've got a closed or, or semi-closed nose as mine does, the, uh, the whole trigger guard is not uh, covered. So it, it sticks out quite a bit due to the length. But I'm going to turn on my uh, optic here and hopefully be somewhere in the neighborhood. Now let's set it on bright so as I can see it. And again, this is just to uh, warm up a little bit, just make sure the gun's functioning properly. And uh, I did uh, field strip it and lubricate it, so it's greased up nice with uh, extreme weapons grease. I thought I'd wear the colors since we're shooting the Glock. Well, let's just see how it goes. I'm not even going to show you the target this time. I'm just going to do my warm ups and then I will tape these holes up. So I guess printing a little high, like maybe, I don't know. Yeah. Darn if it's not smooth though. Okay. Well, it shot a really nice group. Shot it about uh, maybe four inches high for where my from where my red dot is. I have to decide whether I want to adjust for that or not. Okay, so here's my warm-ups, and I was only back at about maybe eight yards or so, so I wasn't very far away. Um, you can see that one hole right there. That's actually. <laughs> I'm not sure how I got that one. I must have, I must have uh, pulled the gun low. But uh, this group, that is pretty much where I was aiming, though. I was aiming right at the zero. And you can see the group, which is a good group for offhand. But uh, a little high, about four inches high or so. But I'm going to go ahead, I think, and leave my optic alone for the moment. And I'm going to set up a better target for testing and I'm gonna see what this thing does it looks like at 25 yards Let's see what the difference is ballistically between the Glock 20 10 millimeter and the Glock 40. Do some chrono tests. For ammo, I'm using Sig Sauer Elite Performance Full Metal Jacket Ball Ammo. Uh, the, uh, they do publish their, uh, their speed, muzzle velocity. So I'm at about 12 feet from the chronograph and we'll compare the two. Do five shots each. Well, 
1162 1162 and 1192 pretty consistent let's review that The high was 1218, the low 1169, average 1186. So the average out of the Glock 20, 1186 feet per second. Glock 40. Twelve forty seven. Boy, that's awful close to published, isn't it? Twelve forty one. Twelve fifty seven looks like. Twelve fifty three. And twelve forty nine. So also, very consistent. So if nothing else, the SIG ammo is very consistent. Let me review this real quick. The high, 1257. The low, 1241. Very tight. Average, 1249. SIG publishes 1250, so we were right on it with the Glock 40. All right, so I've got eight half gallon and one one gallon at the back jugs, all full of water, all lined up like pretty maids in a row. And I've given myself a little aim point. So hopefully I can hit this row straight. See what kind of penetration this 10 millimeter gives. This is not any kind of official test in any kind of way at all. This is mostly an excuse to shoot water jugs. Let's see what happens. I'm going to shoot Sig Sauer Elite Performance V Crown. Let's see what it does. If I'm lucky, I'll be able to capture the projectile. All right, let's see what I can find here. Looks like it took care of four jugs pretty thoroughly, and then we've got a puncture in this last one. Still have water in the last one. But, and it's, it's seeping out pretty quickly, but there's no, there's no bullet in there. So the bullet didn't make it into that one. Aha! I got a copper jacket and, yep, sticking right out. So, can you see this? Oh, let me turn, turn around so I can see it. Okay, so, in this last jug, the bullet is still just sticking out the back. Where it hit that last one, see it? And we have the copper jacket completely separated inside, if you can hear it rattling around in there. So, I'll keep this, maybe keep it just like it is. Go back and take a look at it. See what that V-crown looks like. But, for the purposes of rough measurement, that was, Four. So, four jugs is 
I'll get a measurement on that. Okay, just for the record here, Fort Jugs is approximately 16 inches. So, just about 16 inches is the distance of four water jugs. So, let's try that again, just for fun, because I got another bullet and I still got jugs there. The Glock 40, 10 millimeter. Six hour elite performance, V Crown ammo. Okay, looks like we dented our jug, our, our one gallon anchor bottle. Looks like this was the last one. I see a little piece of copper jacket right there. And I hear something. So I think we might have. Yeah. <laughs> That's a pretty nasty wound you got there. <laughs> yep. There it is. So, again into the last jug and dented the one behind it. So that puts, I would say about 16 inches, I would call it. Hey, that reminds me, oh, never mind. I can wait. Nice looking expansion. We'll take a closer look at these in a bit. Meanwhile, I got one more jug here. It needs to be shot. See if I can do it. One hand. Yipper. Okay, so as I said, this is not a ballistics video, and I'm not a qualified person to even make a ballistics video. I'll leave that to folks like TN Outdoors 9 who do excellent work in that area. However, here's just a quick look because I was able to retrieve both of these rounds from the water um, after going through four water jugs, which was approximately 16 inches. Uh, in both cases, you can see that the, uh, the lead inner bullet separated from the copper jacket but right at the end they were both together in the very last jug and both of them penetrated about almost identically they both had bruised the um, the outer wall the back outer wall of the, the jug and had started to to bruise the jug behind it but neither fully penetrated so the uh, the complete distance for both of these was almost identical Again, that was at about 16 inches, but here's just a look at what one of these rounds looks like in its virgin state right here. So that's a pretty aggressive designed hollow point to begin with. V-Crown is what it's called. It's the uh, Sig Sauer ammunition. This is, of course, the 10 millimeter, 180 grain. And then 
that's what they look like after 16 inches of penetration just in water. So again, nothing special about my technique. <laughs> this is a very non-scientific approach, but uh, pretty impressive. Good expansion, very consistent, both of them. Um, the copper jacket flowered up pretty well on both of them. And then right at the end, they separated out. But uh, not bad. I'll, I'm going to, it's got me curious enough now that I'm going to probably do a little more research and just uh, see what information is out there in terms of official ballistics tests on this stuff. So there it is, just a quick aside in the middle of a first hundred video <laughs> that usually has nothing to do with any kind of ammunition or ballistics, but there it is, quick peek, something interesting. Okay, wrapping things up for the first hundred. Glock 40, Gen 4, 10 millimeter, six inch, grizzly bear hunter, <laughs> or at least a pig hunter. Give you my thoughts in a minute. Um, pretty impressive gun. I know I did a little uh, opinionating, some of you might call it whining, about uh, not being able to get one of these earlier. Um, and that all still stands. I, don't, I haven't changed my mind about that at all. I don't like the way they did that at all. Um, but I did have an opportunity to pick one up, and I wanted one, so I got it. All right, let's put the last 15 through the first 100. Actually, that'll take me well over 100. Are you seeing this? Definitely a hunting handgun. Okay, I'm just at 10 yards, but that's, uh, that's pretty good. Turn my optic off, lest I get home with dead batteries. So, thoughts after the first hundred? Um, I guess number one, you know, was it worth the wait? Was it worth the aggravation? And all that? I don't know. It, this is a, to me, this is a toy. Um, if you're a hunter and you want to hunt with handguns, and you live in a state where you're allowed to do that, um, you can take. You know, I know there's a lot of states where you can take whitetail. Um, with a handgun and certainly, you know, wild, wild boar, um, javelina, things like that. This would be an ideal gun for that. You put, you put an optic, a nice optic on it, and this, this Burris is doing a good job. This is a Burris Surefire 3. It's doing a good job, but if you put a really good optic on here, you know, and dial it in, this thing is a tack driver, there's no doubt about it. Recoil is pretty gentle for 10 millimeter, even when I was shooting the, um, you know, the full house, uh, self-defense or hunting um, jacketed hollow point loads um, it handles it really well part of that is weight part of it is length and balance um, and of course you've got that glock polymer frame that's absorbing a lot of that recoil for you too i know a lot of people might want to know what's the recoil feel like compared to the 20. i could feel a difference um, but not a huge difference but certainly the glock 40 handles recoil much softer than the 20 does um, you do feel the difference um, it's a nice gun. It's well balanced. It's got a hell of a sight radius, even if you didn't have an optic on it. Um, and like I said, this this thing is a tack driver. There's no doubt about that. It's going to be a lot of fun to play with. I will bring it back out. We will do a lot more in-depth stuff. Maybe do some more accuracy and head to head it against some other stuff. Looking forward to doing that. But for now, there it is. The first hundred. Glock 40.
the sound of gunfire off in the distance. I'm getting used to it now.